So when you're watching the movie, outside of the visuals, outside of the acting, the special effects, there's something that's very important that many people don't really give credit where it's due. And that's the soundtrack, the score. You gotta give credit to whoever does the score because sometimes when you're watching a really cool action sequence, you're like, damn, I'm really into it, but you don't realize that sometimes it's the music that's helping elevate the scene, even in a dramatic sequence, even in a horror movie. All of the music cues help the film be what, it's, what it is. There's a video out there where they show you how the ending of Star Wars would have been without John Williams' score. It would have been really, really awkward. That last piece of music where they're walking to get the medals, it's so iconic and it's such a great melody that without it, it would feel weird. Star Wars is both the music by John Williams and the film directed by George Lucas. So that's an example. So my first honorable mention, I did want to put Star Wars in, hey, let's, let's, put, let's put Star Wars. You know, Star Wars has a lot of good music by John Williams. But I wanted to mention a composer that often kind of goes unmentioned. And his name is Jerry Goldsmith. He's done a lot of known scores. One of the most known is, of course, The Omen. And that's my first honorable mention. He did a great soundtrack for this movie. The Abyssatini track is so eerie and creepy that whenever I hear it, it, it just gives me goosebumps, more so than the actual film. I don't go around, you know, on my earbuds listening to it, but every now and then when I do get a chance to listen to it, whether when I'm watching the movie or the end credits, it just gives me chills. It's a great, great little piece of uh, music. Number five is also a soundtrack done by John Williams, and that movie is Jaws. Everyone who's seen the movie, or even heard of the movie, know the beat that I'm talking about. I won't hum it because copyright, but you know when you see a shark movie, even parodies have used that little melody or a resemblance of it. So much so that the fear of sharks in the water, it's not just the cinematography and the directing from uh, Steven Spielberg, but it's that musical tone, a little beat that's so simplistic, but so iconic and terrifying that to this day, people are still afraid of going into the water because of this movie. It's a great little piece of music and it gets used in different ways throughout the film, especially towards the end when Roy Scheider's character is trying to get rid of the shark. So great little piece of music. So number four is a Christopher Nolan film. Christopher Nolan loves working with Hans Zimmer. I think they make a great combination. They know how to speak to each other in the terms of what they want on screen. Hans Zimmer, you know, he doesn't get enough credit. Interstellar, whether you like it or not, whether you like the homage for 2001 or don't like the fact that it's the answer is love, you gotta admit that the soundtrack for Interstellar is so good. I listen to it sometimes even just for studying or for reading. Like it's, it's very, it has a really interesting beat. Like I really like what he did with the movie. Like there's one track called No Time for Caution, which is a sequence where uh, Matthew McConaughey's character is trying to dock. I thought that piece of music was excellent. It's like a masterpiece of music. If you ever get a chance on YouTube, you can listen to the whole uh, musical soundtrack for Interstellar, really, really good. Number three is a movie that also, if you were to take out the musical score at the ending of the film, it wouldn't work at all. There's actually a video out there which is the importance of John Williams' music. And that movie is E.T. The last bit of E.T. from the riding of the bike towards the end when his family arrives, that whole scene, like, it still kind of brings tears to my eyes and I realize, and that's not just what I'm seeing on the screen, but it's the music. The music was so important to the movie E.T. that it's, this is the only time it's been done. The movie was edited to fit the music of John Williams. It's usually the movie has been edited and the, the composer, along with, with the Symphonica, they have to work to fit their music into the edit. So it was done the other way around and it just shows how powerful John Williams' score was. I also really like the piano solo that you hear towards the end. A lot of great melodies in this movie that I can't see this music in another film, because there's other music that you can say, oh, this could fit another film. No, it's so synonymous with the movie E.T. So number two, every time I hear this score, my fat ass wants to work out, at least for, for a week. After that, I forget that I heard it and I just go back to my old fat, uh, lazy ways. And that movie is Rocky. I've mentioned Rocky before in other top five videos, but I'm mentioning it again in terms of, this, of the music. 
the score for this movie, it gets you into the mood of actually wanting to box or wanting to get in shape. It's everyone knows the Flying High song. Even all the sequels have particular songs that people remember. You know, or yeah, I have Tiger and so forth and so forth. But that main theme of him training in the training montage is such a memorable, memorable piece of music. Again, kind of like E.T., I can't see this music working in another film. Maybe in a parody, but it wouldn't work as such as so well as it did in the actual Rocky film. And number one is not really one film, it's a set of films, and that's the Dark Knight trilogy. Hans Zimmer did an amazing job transcending all of the music that started when Batman Begins that he did with uh, James Newton Howard and it went along into the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises in a perfect uniform like there are certain beats that return and whenever you hear music people don't mention this whenever you hear music again that you've heard before and you associate with a scene it triggers something in the brain like you have a sense of familiarity and a sense of emotion that that comes from within you like there's a, a specific track that gets played every single time a character falls to their death or Batman becomes triumphant and it gets played in every three films. I would suggest listening to a particular track called Chasing the Convoy East. I listen to this one a lot. I actually use it to working out. Um, there's actually workout mixes, like gym mixes for the Dark Knight trilogy. So these are the top five movie soundtracks. Sadly, I can't hum or mention any of them because of copyright issues, but do check them out. Like, you know, actually listen to these tracks and hopefully you'll see what I mentioned on this video. Anyway, guys, make sure to click uh, the subscribe button, uh, like the video and uh, hit the bell button. And until next time.